cold in here. So for the duration of the time I was in Zion National Park in October, the entire week that I was there, nine days, whatever, uh, I spent the entire time in the east side of the park. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One, because, well, I, I really wanted to focus on the east side. And two, it was early enough in October that all the fall color was up high in the higher elevations and the main canyon hadn't really transitioned yet. Really just didn't want to waste any of my time trying to focus on this at all. But one of the things I was really kind of wanting to do that I didn't was to go into the Narrows with a large format camera. So I've returned. It is now the first weekend in December and I've returned to the park. The whole purpose of this trip is just a weekend trip. I thought I'd just jump in and hit the Narrows real quick with a large format gear. Now there's a couple weeks in between Thanksgiving and Christmas where the shuttle buses aren't running. So I'm actually able to drive up the canyon with my personal vehicle, which is something you can't normally do. Oh, we can't do it all when the shuttle buses are running, uh, which made it easier. So that's why I picked this weekend because uh, the forecast seemed like it was gonna be a little bit warmer. So it wouldn't be quite as frigid in there. And I'm able to drive up the canyon super early in the morning and get to the trailhead at like six in the morning. So that's the plan is to wake up in the morning, drive into the canyon and hit the trailhead and get in the river early as I can and try to take advantage of all the daylight before it gets dark. So I've set up in a particularly frigid corner in this canyon. It is. I'm pretty cold. <laughs> There's a constant breeze coming around the corner, so it's uh, pretty icy right here. So the wall of this canyon where it curves off in the distance here is catching some reflected light right now. And that's what I've set up the camera on here. I hauled the Intrepid 4x5 into the Narrows here because, well, it's lighter and it's not as much gear. So trying to stay agile to navigate all these rocks without falling on your face is kind of important so i like to, to take the layer kit so i've got the intrepid mark IV, four four by five here shooting a vertical comp with my fujinon 75 millimeter f5.6 lens and i just composed this so that i've got the canyon light all on the you know top two thirds of the frame and then the bottom third is just the river flowing downstream so my exposures are pretty long on these ones because uh, it's dark in here but also I had to add some time because I uh, decided to use my linear polarizer. There's some glare on the sandstone on the left side of this composition, a little bit in the water too. I went back and forth about polarizing it all the way out or partially or ultimately decided to go ahead and polarize all of it out. But with that I shot one sheet of Kodak Ektar 100 and that was a minute and 14 seconds at f22. And then I shot a sheet of Velia 50 uh, which was a minute 50 seconds f22 as well. The Velvia sheet, I decided to expose two thirds brighter than the Ektar sheet just because I was a little worried about those shadows. Granted, you got to wash the shadows with Ektar too, but a little more worried about the Velvia shot. So I went up two thirds to stop there. So this time I cheated and I looked at the film already. It's been a couple months since uh, the film came back. So of course I peeked at it. So this just won't be my first initial reaction. That's the only difference. So with that out of the way. So this is Ektar. It's probably easier to see what's going on here if I show you the Velvia shot. It's turned on a little dark. A little dark like a lot over here on the side of this canyon walls here. It's, it's pretty much black. I love the way the water looks on this though. I love the blue tones. I think it's gorgeous. And the light 
Could have been a little warmer here. The sky color coming in here on this, on this brighter part of the image is a little cool. Uh, the glow is not quite as warm as I would have liked it to be. But the water is just absolutely gorgeous. So I think I'm going with the XR shot on this one. Just because it did a better job of, of, of keeping this detail here. Of course, it's inverted here, so it's harder to see that. But where this went completely black on Velvia, I think the Ektar did a lot better job with the shadows here. But the Velvia was a experiment. I kind of had a feeling that Ektar was going to be a better choice on this. Just naturally because of the dynamic range in the scene. But I'm still glad I took the Velvia shot. Uh, so it wasn't a waste because now when I go do the Ektar inversion, I can use the Velvia exposure as kind of a guide and try to get this water to look similar or as close to it as I can. Otherwise, I kind of wish I would have backed off the polarizer just a touch here so I had more of a reflection in the foreground. I was really worried about wanting to see what the detail underneath the water. I didn't want the water to be glare, you know. But I think I could have backed it off a little bit and got a little more of this reflection because it was really gorgeous seeing that with your eye standing there in a canyon. Sharpness looks good. Of course, there isn't a lot of detail in the foreground to worry about. So, I mean, it's all moving water. So I wasn't worried about getting razor sharp detail there. But it looks to my eyes like these rocks over here are sharp, as well as the top of the frame. Looks like it's plenty sharp. So no problems there. Compositionally, I think it's okay. That was a little bit of a challenge. But all in all, not bad for first exposure in the narrows on 4x5 large format. So, so here's the final image. And as always, let me know down in the comments what you think. This is the corner of the canyon I've tried to shoot several times now. Uh, all on digital this is the first time I've made an attempt on film. But since it is on film, I did spend a little more time hunting for a composition this time because there's more skin in the game, right? But I've also shot this several times, so I kind of done a few things that did or didn't work for me, and I knew what I wanted to improve on. Uh, so hopefully this one at least is an improvement. I don't know if it's going to be everything I ever wanted out of it, but it's just a part of the canyon I think that's really interesting to me. Uh, it's got some really beautiful orange sandstone with uh, varnish stripes coming down it, which I think is really cool to look at. But it doesn't quite glow like some of the other corners in this canyon does. So it's a little more difficult to shoot. It's a little flatter lighting. There is some reflected light in the scene right now. It's just very weak. It's not very prominent. But it did warm up quite a bit from when I walked past this the first time this morning, so I decided to go ahead and shoot it. It's about the same time of day as the last times I tried to shoot it. I think it's probably about as good as it gets. It's just a dark corner of the canyon. So I set this one up in a horizontal composition, shooting again with the Fujinon 75mm f5.6. And what I was going for and what I like about where I'm standing right here is kind of the way this, this rock face meets that one. And it kind of like, you can see that it goes around the corner, but you can't quite see where it goes. It kind of adds a little bit of mystery to it, I think. But then there's also a bunch of bigger boulder sitting in the water that I think is uh, really interesting too. Adds a little foreground interest. Of course, I mean, the river is in the foreground, so that's a lot of foreground interest. But it's also a really clear section where it's not like really chunky boulders and stuff. It's a lot more like fine pebbles and stuff down in the, underneath the water. So I think it looks visually more appealing that way. And I'm also up on an embankment so I can look down and you can see a better view of what's underneath the water. So I've anchored the lower right hand corner of my composition with this smaller boulder. Uh, and I'm kind of trying to use a little bit of rear tilt to use a lens distortion to kind of help even out the water and the way that it fills the frame as opposed to the, the sandstone in the, in the upper half of the frame. Uh, and I think I got it. I think you got it working pretty well. So a little bit of rear tilt, a little bit of front tilt to compensate for the plane of focus shift. I actually shot two sheets of Ektar 100 on this, but the first shot was a slightly different composition. So I, I took one exposure and then I reframed because I realized I wanted this boulder in the corner. It wasn't even in the composition on the first one. 
So I guess uh, I'll have two different compositions. But I shot both of those exposures at f22. They were eight seconds and then 10 seconds. Uh, an additional two seconds on the first exposure because it was darker in here. And I've been shooting these at f22 instead of 32 because it's a wider angle lens. So depth of field isn't quite as big of an issue in this one. And then also the slightly wider aperture allows me to keep my shutter times a little faster because there's been a lot of traffic. So I don't have to expose for quite so long so I can shoot in between the groups of people so that I don't end up with uh, ghosting and keep people out of the shot. This is the Ektar image I was shooting uh, while I was talking to the camera. And then I have a second exposure that I took, I mentioned in the field that I took before that, and that's right here. So you can see the difference is I, I reframed and moved the camera down a little bit so that I can include this rock in the corner here. And the first image didn't have that. And honestly, when I'm looking at it now, I really thought in the field that I would probably like this one better. Maybe I do. I'm not sure yet. Sometimes when you're looking at them inverted like this, you might kind of assume or make different decisions than you would if you were seeing it correct. Um, so I guess we'll see how I feel about that. Generally, I like this one. I like the anchor in the corner here. And I like how the, the lines kind of like lead you towards all the lines in the canyon and stuff lead you towards the center of the image. But that is more center here on this first image as opposed to this one. It's kind of up a little bit. So I'm not quite sure how I feel. Even the lines in the sandstone here are pointing towards the center of the image. It's super cool. Just like all these wear lines from when the canyon was being cut. Sharpness looks good. Exposure seems fine. Looks like Ektar handled this pretty well. So I'm happy with that. I've shot this scene in the canyon a few times on digital. I actually have one test print on my wall from when I had a printer that worked. <laughs> it was a digital photo of this uh, that was as close as I have gotten to being happy with it. And I think this was an improvement on that. So I, I think to date, this is my best attempt in this one corner in the canyon anyway. So it remains to be seen if, I'm, if I think I'm done now or if I'll revisit this again in the future. I'm sure, if the conditions get better, I'll shoot it again. But for now, I think I'm pretty happy with it. So. Here's the final image. Let me know what you think down in the comments. I set up on this pocket in the side of the wall that's got a bunch of stones and boulders that have kind of filled it in, probably from flash floods and, you know, just whatever hydraulic phenomenon it is that pulls in pebbles into holes and rocks. It's got this nice, like, elongated shape in the sandstone, and it's got a pretty good variety of different color stones in it. Pretty neutral tones, but there is, you know, some blue, some whites, even a little bit of reddish toned rock in there. Uh, and then the reddish sandstone too. The, the top of it is darker than the bottom of it. And then there's some bigger boulders that are kind of in the bottom underneath this. Uh, doesn't look like they were quite small enough to fit in that pocket or they've fallen out over time. I don't, I don't know what the geological history is here, but uh, I'm using it as my foreground interest is what I was getting at. So I've lined this up with my Nikon Nikkor 150 millimeter lens, F5.6. So I framed up basically just this pocket of rocks uh, there's just a sliver of water down on the bottom of the composition. Uh, where there's a little bit of like a lichen or moss line too. That's pretty cool. Uh, but the whole scene's getting hit by reflected light right now, which is what grabbed my attention. So I exposed two sheets of Elvia 50 on this. Thing is, I was a little unsure about my metering. So I did bracket two thirds of stop. My first uh, exposure was eight seconds, F32. And the second exposure was 15 seconds. So an extra two thirds of a stop. 
Other than that, I used a little bit of rear tilt on this one again, uh, just to kind of put a little more exaggeration towards the boulders. Uh, they, le they lean away from the camera, so that kind of helped me counteract that to kind of give me even distribution, even weight in the photograph. I thought it helped even it out a little better. Other than that, that's about it. Uh, it's three exposures here in the Narrows for today. It was uh, kind of on my way out, actually, and I saw this one. So I got a feeling this might be the last exposure, unless I see something else that grabs my attention. But it's a cool scene. I think it'll be, I think Velvio will serve it well. It, it, I think it suits a really colorful film. I didn't use any warming filters or anything, so parts of it might go blue, and I'm okay with that. I think the reflected light on the neutral tones, plus the blue in the shadow, I think, I think I'll be okay with it. So I hope. Is that pockets in the wall. I believe that I bracketed these. Yes, I did. This one's a little darker. I don't remember which one was which. I don't remember if I shot the brighter or the darker one first, but I remember being concerned about how bright this white rock in the foreground was going because it is a white rock, but it's not pure white. There's texture and detail in there, so it doesn't go all the way to zone 10. And I was a little unsure just because of inexperience, you know, and I can tell you right now, I think I like the darker exposure. It's not quite so washed out here, and then the exposure looks a little more even and a little more correct on these rocks down in this pocket here. Now, granted, it does go a little dark here. You get this really black corner up here and you start to lose detail, but I think that's okay. But honestly, like when you scan in a darker negative like this, you can kind of adjust the exposure on the scan and capture more of the shadow detail. So I'm not too worried about it. And I also think that the color is a little better. It's a little more saturated than the darker one, of course. Compositionally, it's a little different than anything else you might see in the narrow sometimes. You know, a lot of times you want to shoot the grand vista, you know, because, well, the canyon's beautiful, but... This was a little different. It's just kind of focusing on this one detail on the side of the wall, which I thought was interesting. And I don't know. I think the light and the colors are, are interesting. I think it makes for a pretty cool photograph. Curious to hear your thoughts. So here's the final image. And as always, let me know down in the comments what you think. So that was all the film from this trip. It was just a quick weekend. It was actually just a Saturday and I came back the next morning. But it was fun to be in the Narrows again and it's been a couple of years. So it was fun to see the canyon and expose some film on it. The Intrepid, I think, did great. It was, it was a lot lighter weight than trying to haul the Toyo in there, which would have been impractical. But with that lighter weight kit, it fit really well in my day pack and it felt, you know, much more balanced than when I'm carrying around the big Toyo. So uh, I'm excited for that. So I think you'll see that Intrepid getting some more use you know, hopefully this year, maybe once it warms up a little bit and doing some backpacking trips. So anyway, that's it for me. Uh, I just want to say thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, you can let me know by hitting that thumbs up button down below. And if you want to stay in touch and see what I'm up to next, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button while you're down there. Thanks again. Take care. And I'll see you on the next adventure.